Welcome back, everybody, to Ultimate CNFT. Mike, a.k.a. Mr. Ultimate, coming with you here today. I'm very honored to have on this program one of the co-founders of Donketsu, Mr. Tommy. How are you doing, brother? Mike, uh, thanks for having me on the show, mate. Um, you know, I love that you kind of spoke about our project in the past as well. Um, you know, we've been in the space for some time now, and it's good to finally meet you and kind of talk about our project. Awesome to have you here. You know, I've been a big fan of your project since when I first came into the space. Uh, I think you guys had just minted. Uh, that's how fresh I was at the time. And I remember loving your project. And I remember um, that was kind of like my first taste of, of a project being developed and something I really liked and everything. And then there was a second round coming. And, and, and then I had to have, you know, some of these more to be able to mint the other one. And at that time, it's funny because, you know, it's just a, it's a picture and a window of how far we've come along in the CNFT space as far as development has gone. Because at that time, it was it was taking forever to transact on NAMI, and which is the only wallet I had at the time. And I was frustrated because I, I wasn't able to to move at the speed that I wanted to. But I remember your project being something I loved. And then one day down the road, you you had reached out to me and, and talked about doing some coverage on my YouTube channel on your project. And I was like, wow, man, I've, I've, really, I've really made it out there. People know that I'm here now because you guys are reaching out to me. That was back when you guys were Ada Ninjas. And so of course, being a big fan of, of your project and you guys have done so much since I made that video and since you even released your second and third series. And I'm super excited to talk to you about everything Don Ketsu here. And uh, again, I'm honored to have you here, brother. So uh, look, the stage is yours. Tell us everything that you can possibly tell us about your project. Yeah, look, I'll try to keep it short. You know, we've been in this space <laughs> for a year and a half now. Um, you know, we first started back in September 2021, uh, you know, launched as a PFP project, anime inspired. And, you know, since then we've released three collections and did one big burn. Um, so to generate the fourth collection. So now we have four main collections that each represent a different clan in the universe of Danketsu. Mm -hmm. And now it's just about on-chain banter, on-chain clan wars, uh, and providing value back to the holders, right? So when you look at the, the types of products that we've developed in the past, we've done community um, storytelling, and we've de developed manga through that. Uh, we've developed community-driven music. So we have four songs out um, on Spotify now that can be listened to. Community actually got to help us write the, the lyrics, you know, vote on the beats, provide their voices into the song as well. And now we have the gamified, I guess, NFT staking experience. Um, it's gamified, it's interactive. It's not a true full game or blockchain game. It's just utilizing those NFTs to provide a much more interesting mechanic rather than just your traditional NFT staking. So that's the, I guess, the, the verticals that we've developed. Um, I, I'm happy to kind of go into detail in, in any one of those. Um, and yeah, that's that's the, the four. And of course we have the, the Ninjas token coming out um, on, you know, for public sale on the 13th of February, and then um, coming out to token generation on a mid, middle of March. So that's the token that is utilized for the entire ecosystem. You know, we're gonna use that for votes. We're going to use that for upgrading NFT art. We're going to use that, of course, on the Danketsu Missions platform, which is the NFT staking platform to earn the rewards. Excellent, excellent. So I remember um, now this this token was in the works for a very long time because I remember reading up about that on, on your first version of the white paper uh, back in the day. And it was very exciting to see what you guys were developing for that. So one question real quick that comes to mind for people who are watching and maybe aren't quite as familiar because you guys are definitely OGs in the space. I mean, you've been doing it for a long time. You've done it very successfully. Um, you've done several different releases. They've all been successful. I actually didn't know about your burn uh, mechanism. I'm assuming you, you, you uh, made this uh, able to take certain NFTs turn them in and get, uh, uh, what was it, the fourth version you said, the fourth uh, iteration? Uh, that's actually really cool. I, I didn't know that. So I'm still learning uh, about these things myself. But for the tokens, for those who are watching, um, so to, to generate those tokens and, and how they can holders can get a hold of them, is it by holding the NFTs themselves? Yeah, so um, there will be different ways for you to get the token. Uh, first and foremost, by holding um, seasons one to seasons four of our collections they will mm -hmm. be getting a, a small airdrop uh, for each NFT that you hold. The, cool. the second way is actually participating in the public sale. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're doing a, a small fundraise to kind of uh, get, get funds to develop and scale the missions platform. And of course, for the wider ecosystem play as well. Um, and then uh, interacting, you know, once the, the token's actually out, interacting with the missions platform. So sending your NFTs on missions and then earning rewards that way. Um, and then different other um, 
avenues as well. So that's that's what we want to do. You know, at the moment, it's just uh, NFT holders get access to our ecosystem. Mm-hmm. But with the NFT token, sorry, with the token, now it's like, okay, you get to ac- have access to our ecosystem without actually owning any, any, any NFTs. So um, that's when, okay. you know, we're talking about mass adoption, uh, Web2, right. Web3, all that stuff. You know, that's, that's the opportunities that come. Very interesting. So you're actually looking beyond just maybe having what uh, a lot of people associate NFTs with besides art. And then you started looking into utilities and stuff like that. Owning NFTs is kind of like a membership to like, what, like you say, an ecosystem or a club or whatever it may be. So you're actually looking to go beyond just having the ownership of the NFTs and, and allowing token holders to be able to integrate into the ecosystem. Is that is that what I'm hearing? That's right. That's right. And I think that's, that's awesome. one of the reasons why we did the uh, most recent rebrands from 80 Ninjas to Danketsu. You know, we were having conversations with a lot of, um, you know, investors, um, businesses outside of Cardano. Um, and, and one, we know that it's going to be cross-chain at some point um, awesome. in the future. We're already speaking with a lot of, you know, projects on other chains and how do we integrate them into our missions platform or the ecosystem. Um, so we knew that, you know, maybe having Ada at the front wasn't, I guess, fitting for the project itself long term. Um, but then also Ninjas. You know, everyone loves Ninjas. We love Ninjas. But I think the term ninjas is actually very co- too common all right, for us to be recognized as a project. And that's why we just decided to rebrand to Danketsu. Danketsu is um, the last name of our protagonist, Adan Danketsu. Okay. It also means unity in Japan. You know, Adan, uh, he traverses the space in terms of the clan wars, uh, the, lore, the lore and the story, and he unites all the three clans together. Um, and, and that's why we've given him that last name and also, I guess, the, the name of the, the business now. So, um, but you, like, like, like you said, right, what do we look like in two to five years time? Right. Where do we want to be? You know, when the next bull market comes or when we get mass adoption, a collection size of 22,000 isn't enough to, to, to support, I guess, that, that continued value to our community, right? We need to be looking at bigger numbers. And so the token one opportunity to kind of provide that um, access to to more people. That's actually um, very different than what I'm hearing from a lot of people who who have that in, uh, exclusivity within just their NFTs alone. But you are definitely, you know, you're, you're thinking bigger, you're thinking broader. Uh, I really like that. And I don't want to get off track on, on talking about all the things about your project, but you said something to me that has been very much on my mind recently with, with my own adventures and the things that I'm trying to do to grow, you know, the project I'm developing and also my, my YouTube channel for being able to, to get information out there. And that's cross chain. And that seems to be really taking hold in the space, which I think is great because you got all these, you got these you've got the NFT uh, space in general. You've got all these different platforms for which people are operating on. And each one of kinds of seems to have their own sort of macro economic, I guess, way, not economic, but uh, involvement that you could look at the way projects interact with each other, which I think we do very well here on Cardano. And I would like other platforms to learn with, with what we have here. I think it's very special, but um, that took the question right out of my mouth. You know, why the change? Because I remember you as Ada Ninjas, of course, and anyone who's been here long enough remembers this OG project that has always been developing, always pushing forward, and always been very successful with every release that you guys have put out. But thinking in that broader term, that macro term, and being able to want to facilitate such a broader expanse, I think is awesome. And I think that we need more of that. I love the idea of cross-chain and how you're going to be breaking into some of these other platforms and, and having to drop the name off, but still maintaining the fact that, hey, we were born and raised on Cardano and we will always be centralized in Cardano. Uh, I think that's awesome. Um, I don't know how much you know you can you can talk about these kinds of things or whatever, and I'd love to get back to more about what your project is. But this cross-chain is, I think, the future. I think so many people are talking on Twitter spaces and, and all these other, I'm starting to research these things as well. It's just really a way to really expand NFTs in general and have everybody kind of agree that we all agree on one thing. We love NFTs, right? Yeah, yeah. And I, I want to expand on that a little bit, right? So if you take sure. it from a macro point of view, you, you view the um, blockchain protocols as the technology behind, I guess, the the application, right? So the mm-hmm. NFTs is the utility or the application. Everything else is just tech behind it, right? Um, so in a perfect world, you're buying NFTs, but you don't really need to know whether it's on, you know, Cardano, Ethereum, or VeChain. You just know you're buying you know, NFTs, right? And, and that's how it, sh- it should work. Um, but if you look at, let's say, for example, how social platforms came about, you know, you have Instagram, you have Facebook and you have, let's say TikTok, they all serve different purposes, but they all function very similarly. So that mm-hmm. you're sharing, you know, your, your, 
your ideas, your content, whatever it, it is. But then maybe the, the payment platform, right? Because you can pay by credit card um, and pay with fiat on all these platforms. It's the same, I guess, mechanism. Now is we're just in- introducing different mechanisms to pay, right? So maybe you'll pay with um, Ether, you'll pay with ADA, or you'll pay with um, you know, a, a different, I guess, coin. But it becomes very easy in the future because they're all interconnected. All the wallets mm-hmm. are very easy to use. All the bridges are, are there. Um, and, and that's the world that I want to see, right? Where it's like, it's not about, hey, Cardano versus Ethereum. It's about, hey, mm-hmm. NFTs onboarding to the rest of the world. So that's that's the way we see it. And that's why Dunketsu Dunket just made sense. We don't want to be, yes, it's it's nice to be, I guess, um, centralized and built on Cardano. But if we want that mass adoption to come, it, it is cross-chain. It is that, that benefit for the entire ecosystem. I love that, man. And in hearing what you say, it's it's like it's like we both kind of articulated in, in, in the different words, but the same idea. You know, NFTs. NFTs are going to become a part, I believe, of the of the globe in in a way that, as the years progress and technology progresses, the there is no limit to what we can do with this technology. It's always being pushed forward, and I think a lot of it's being developed by people such as yourself, people such as myself, and so many other great people in the space. No matter which platform you're building on, you are integrating something. You're building something. You're 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 expanding the uh, idea of what an NFT is. And uh, I was actually talking to someone earlier today, back in 2017, when I first got into crypto, I started my YouTube channel because I was telling everyone the same thing all the time. And I said, you know, I'm just going to put, you know, product on, I'm going to put stuff on YouTube and sell people to come watch my YouTube channel, mostly for families and friends and stuff. But not everybody had heard of Bitcoin. And in fact, most people still at that point had not even heard of Bitcoin, which is obviously the where it starts when it comes to crypto, right? So if you take that and you put that into NFTs, if you look today, almost everybody knows what Bitcoin is. They don't have to know what, it, what how it works or whatever, but they've heard of Bitcoin at this point. Mass adoption is setting in in various stages around the world. Now you look at NFTs, there are people who know everything they can know about crypto. And maybe even if they've even heard of NFTs, they don't know what they are. Uh, there's a lot of misconceptions about what a, NFTs are, and every you know, if you don't know anything about it, you think NFT. A lot of people immediately they think scam because there's been a lot of high, uh, you know, a lot of, I guess not high net worth, but people have who have been out there on the main stage have scammed people, and so. I think as time develops, NFTs are going to be everywhere. Just like everyone knows what Bitcoin is, they're going to know that there's this thing called an NFT. And and I always want to be coming from the standpoint of education, of saying, hey, this is what an NFT is not, and this is what an NFT is. These are the kind of projects that develop uh, this, this technology and push it forward. We are living in the digital age. And we all know that everything is is going digital. It's faster. It's it's the world is connected. It's getting smaller in so many ways. And you look at NFTs; they bring communities together. And that's a one of my favorite things of what got me so excited uh, as a YouTuber when I started covering content, and then eventually going on to make my own project. I love the community aspect of it. And so you guys, obviously being OGs in the space, being around for such a long time, you have a really big community. And I love the fact that you look at this and go, this is the tip of the iceberg. There's just so much more out there. Tell me a little bit about your community, how it's developed, uh, how you guys have put your thumbprint on that community, because you, you really do have a, a very fantastic community, I must say. Yeah, you know what? For a project that's been in the space for a year and a half, um, you know, we, we've we been, I guess, we, we pride ourselves on how we've interacted with our community. Mm-hmm. And one thing that we, we do, you know, all, all the team members, myself and my co-founder, Zushan, we drop into the Discord chat, um, have a chat with the community pretty much daily, um, just awesome. to check in on everyone. How's everything going? Um, you know, what can we do better? How do we provide more value to you guys? And I think that's one of the things that NFTs as a, as a platform and, and blockchain as a platform has allowed us to do. Um, it, it's not about us collecting emails and just doing one-way conversations anymore. It's about mm-hmm. us having that direct feedback and, and live feedback uh, with the community. And it's almost a double-edged sword, right? Because you want to, um, you have a long-term vision and, and goal, which is, you know, not everyone gets to see. Uh, and, but then you have this kind of uh, expectation from the community that you want to serve as well. Uh, so there is mm-hmm. that balance. But I think what makes us, like I said, very strong in, in the space and uh, well recognized with the community is that we're always present. Um, you know, we don't want to be that project that builds a product, uh, then goes quiet for, let's say, four or five months, releases another product, then goes quiet again. Right. I, I think that's not um, value in terms of the community. And I think w- one other thing that make, made us successful w- with the community is that when we first started this project, it was all about bringing a 
a like-minded cohort together that was into anime and manga um, and incredible storytelling. And if you look mm -hmm. at, you know, how, how story is told through, um, you know, traditional comics and, and um, animation, there's always an underlying message about, you know, motivation, uh, becoming a better person, um, you know, it, and it, it, when I think about the, the, the anime that I watched when I was young, Dragon Ball Z, Pokemon, <laughs> Uh, yeah. You know, you know, we know that Ash just became the the world champion now, and he's he's gone through his entire journey to to become that, right? So the Pokemon Master, um, and and that I watched that when I was a, a a toddler, right? And now it's like finally it's come to fruition. So that's how the story is told. Um, but then we know that there's a, a big uh, cohort of of those people that are naturally introverts maybe don't have the, the socially, uh, the show, social skills to kind of connect with people in the outside world, but we have a place now, you know, through, through our community, that's, it's a safe space. Anyone can come through and have a chat with us. You know, you don't have to talk about Danketsu and NFTs. You can talk about life. You can talk about everything. Um, you know, we have a mental wealth, mental wellness, mental wellness channel, um, on, on, on our discord. So it's a very safe space. Um, and you know, that's, that's one thing that we really pride ourselves on. I love that, man. And that speaks to me because, again, you know, community to me is, is the most important thing. It's the heartbeat of everything that you do. It's like if you don't have that community, you don't have anything to work with. Um, and the way you, you have spoken about how, how it was built and how you're, you're there all the time. Look, I, I know what it takes personally to be super involved with your community. It takes a lot of time. And I really believe in life that time is the most valuable asset you'll ever have. It's more important than the bag you have to work with or the retirement plan you're, you're working on. Uh, time is, is really everything. And it, it takes time to engage with your community. And at the same time, you have to spend your time wisely because you're always developing this project. And as the project gets bigger, it actually takes more work. People think that you get to a certain point and it's like you can take a break. You, you can't. There's no breaks. It's always moving forward. It's always growing. And you know, I, I was going to say, I heard you say something that I wanted to, to, to go back to. There was a time in this space, I believe, where, and, and some projects, you know, they would come and they would, they would build a community, they'd be awesome, and then they'd work and they'd, they'd release a project, and then you're right, it'd, it'd be crickets. They would disappear, and it's like, okay, well, we're working on this. And it's like, okay, all right, they're working on something. And they come back with something, and, and boom, again, and then it's back to, you know, there's a balance you have to achieve being able to do that. And, and in this space, I believe our standards have increased because as time goes on, people become better investors. They become smarter, uh, unfortunately. But I guess at the same time, it's just a rule of thumb. You learn a lot from your mistakes. And so as a space in the CNFT space, I see better projects coming in. I see better investors learning what they will settle for and what they will not settle for. And people love to have contact with the founders, with the owners, the people who are developing the project, because it's your vision and it's what you're bringing. It's usually, you know, hopefully tied to some sort of in real life passion. It's not just a job. It's, it's a creation. I know speaking from my standpoint and a lot of the people that I have good relationships with, they all have one thing in common. When you see a very successful long-term project, it's the passion because they love what they're doing and what they're developing and they're bringing something. And when you breed that within your community, it, it's always reflective of who you are as a person. And a lot of times people really are not always investing in just the art or just the tech or whatever. They're investing in the people behind the vision. And so um, from my standpoint, I can vouch the fact that I've always seen that with you guys. I, I don't know your co-founder anywhere as, as well as I know you, but I know you guys have a team of people who are doing a lot of different things. You're, you're talking about building, um, the continuation of the Lord. You have several different, uh, and I'd love for you to talk to me a little bit, maybe about for those people who don't know anything about your project, like the first mint all the way up to where you're at right now, so they can get a better handle on. And if they're looking on JPEG store, for instance, and saying they're shopping around, well, what's the difference between this one and that one? So if you could tell me a little bit about that, uh, I would really appreciate that as well as so with some of the viewers. For myself, I, I mean, I remember chasing after, especially like I said, that second one, and and uh, it was hard because you know, again, it was really time was not on our in that regard but now we've come in this way where things are getting so much quicker and so much better but you've successfully released several iterations of your project and uh, i'd like to know more about them right here on the channel if you could yeah absolutely uh great question right we get this a lot because when we get a newcomer coming through the i guess the community mm -hmm. they're yeah. almost confused not confused but they're like you're, you're, you've done so much stuff there's so much content out there where do i start yeah. um <laughs> And, you know, that's, I think, a, a great problem to have, um, yeah. I think. And it's one of those things where, 
you know, with the rebrand, we updated the website. It's much more simple to go through the website. I know exactly what we do, the different verticals, and of course, the NFT collections. Um, going back to the beginning, we released the first collection in September or October, 2021. That was of the Aroma clan. The second one <clears throat> came in February, the, the year after of the Atsuko clan. And then we did a final collection uh, around May um, last year of the Daisuke clan. Now those three clans make up, I guess, the, the three main clans of, I guess, our universe and our story. You know, the three, the, the clans are at war. Um, they're all searching for this piece of Katana shard that will, you know, help their clan to be the best clan. Right. And we've, we've done so many different, um, storytelling events where the clans are at war. We've done clan wars. We've done burn events. Uh, we've done all these di different aspects, you know, on chain, off chain to kind mm -hmm. of showcase that story. Even on our discord, when you join, you have to pick a clan. You have to pledge your allegiance to a clan and then introduce that clan banter um, throughout the, the chats, right? So that, 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 that's become really fun for us um, from a pro project's point of view. Then we did a, a Great Ninja's Burn. Um, and so all the three clans came together, went to, I guess, a particular spot. We did like a, a storytelling event over seven days. And by the end of it, we burnt 6,400 NFTs. Wow. Um, you had to burn one of each clan plus a fourth of your choice. We did wow. a fourth of your choice because we wanted people to, from a, a story point of view, you know, if you hated one clan, you should burn the most of that clan. Uh -huh. right? It's like, okay, let, let's, let's kill him. Right. But then there's <laughs> also that investor mindset where it's like, okay, I love this mm. clan. Um, should I burn it? Because if I burn it, my clan becomes more scarce in, in the long term. Right. right. So Supply you're, you're playing around two different yeah. um, concepts. And you got to figure out which one is, is yours to, to take. So, um, Atsuko, I think was burnt the most. Daisuke, Daisuke just came uh, shortly after and Arama was the one that kind of held the most in collection size. From that, we generated six, 1,600 NFTs of the fourth clan. And mm -hmm. that's, that's, that for us is our premier collection because in terms of like what the process that got there is essentially four NFTs in one. All right. Right. Um, and in the sub files, we actually leave the images of the um, clans that were burnt or the NFTs that were burnt. Um, so you can actually refer to them in the future. So in, in the metadata, it's just like rest in, rest in peace, NFT number, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that's a really cool thing that we introduced. We do have an art upgrade for the forthcoming as well, because we onboarded um, a Cardano artist called Victor War, and he's going to be, you know, uh, our lead artist, for Danketsu in 2023, he's coming in, um, upgrading the art of the fourth and it's going to become that premier collection. So if, you know, for the newcomers, if there was just one NFT you, you should pick up, um, I'd say pick up the fourth and then start toying around with, you know, what clan you, you prefer and then start playing around with those, uh, collections. They all share very similar utilities. Um, of course the fourth get the most benefits because of the burnt process, the other three clans get similar benefits, but in the long term, they all eventuate to be quite similar. Um, so, because we wanted to provide that, you know, um, storytelling uh, side to the clans. And we thought that if we provided different utilities, then people would make that decision based on the, the utilities rather than the clan themselves. So yeah, four collections. We do have a lot of smaller collections like fan art, concept art, uh, manga panels and, and the such, um, you know, music passes that we do. Uh, but then, you know, they're just kind of secondary to those other collections. Wow. Uh, so I have to ask because I, I, I think about these things as I'm listening to you talk, I have all these, these things come into my mind. Um, first of all, that's a genius idea. I love how you gave the, the balance of, Hey, if you do it this way, this is the result. And if you do it this way, this is the result and letting the people decide what they want to do. This is absolute, you know, genius work. If you ask me, I haven't heard of a project quite doing that. And then even paying homage by having, you know, uh, like you said, in the metadata, that's that, that kind of RIP or whatever it may be remain in there to, to kind of keep that alive because what you created something and now all of a sudden, you know, that thing is no longer there, but it's like now it's still part of the project and somewhere on the blockchain, which is cool. So I've got to ask you, uh, 
it, like who comes up with these kinds of ideas? Is this something that you guys, is just you and your co-founder, is it a panel of people that you bounce ideas off? Is it the kind of thing that you just, it just comes to you and just makes sense and you just do it? Like, how does that work for you guys? Kind of like your relationship, I suppose, with, with your co-founder, you know? Yeah, that's a, a great question. And it's a very complex question because we're so community driven. Um, mm -hmm. that, you know, some, some of the best ideas have actually come from our community. Um, yeah. and then for us, it's That's just, awesome. yeah, okay, we, we have this long-term vision. What is that fundamentally? It's uh, clan banter, different clans. Um, it's great storytelling. So that is always the basis of, of what we do. Um, and, and we don't stray away from that, but we know that now that we've evolved to a multimedia business, we can do storytelling in different formats, right? It's, it's comics mm. written format, um, or illustrations. Um, now we have done to missions, right? It's like, then we, we're doing on-chain storytelling in, in a sense as well. So, um, it starts off myself and Dushan, of course, with, you know, we, we do weekly standups, what, what's happening in the space, what have we delivered? How, how do we improve on, I guess, the, the service? We reach out to the community because we have a very, very strong core community that, you know, aren't afraid to say what you know, their opinions, right? In terms of what, what's good, what's not working. Um, so we use that feedback. Um, and kind of like see what we need to do with, I guess, the, the future roadmap. Now, our future roadmap has evolved quite a bit from when we first started, right? Because when we first started, it was just very simple storytelling through voting um, and comics. And now it's like, okay, we're multimedia. We have gamified experiences. We have music. We have all these different verticals. But we have to find a way to kind of provide that value um, and, and keep it fresh. And... Um, you know, bear market sentiment has had a, had a play in how we do our risk, uh, how we take on risk overall as a business as well. Um, so, you know, you, you would have seen that we developed a playable uh, MVP, uh, a game on Unity that connects to your blockchain. It's an action game. Um, but now we've, you know, kind of slightly moved away to a more ga gamified experience through the NFT staking platform, just purely because we do want to take that risk in the event that, you know, we don't get the adoption that we need because we know that mm. gaming, you know, pure blockchain games need the numbers for it to become sustainable. Yeah. So right. that's one of the, the decisions we've had to make. And, you know, it's all about being smart. Uh, and that's the thing that we ensure we always do bringing back the fun to the NFC holders, but making sure the decisions are smart because we want to be here for the long term, Right. Um, and if we're not smart, then we won't be here for the long term, and that's not fair on the, the community. So, some people will give us slack for it, but for us, it's like we need to be agile and adapt, especially when there's new innovations coming through pretty much every month um, on the chain. Um, but then also, you know, the space, we've been in, been in space for a year and a half and it's felt like five years, to be honest, in terms of totally. how much oh, things yeah. have moved, oh, yeah. right? Uh -huh. um, and we've del delivered so much. We've got four songs out. We've got 350 pages of manga, 100 pages of wiki. Now we have the token, the gamified staking experience too. So. There's, there's quite a bit there. Uh, yeah, I'd say uh, there is quite a bit there. And, you know, I, I hope that some people who are, are watching this and you've made it this far, you know, into this, this interview here, this is, this is fantastic stuff. I'm loving this. And it, there's always new people coming into the space. There's always new ideas. There's always people with that, that have, they want to become, and they want to be in the, in the founder's chair. And I hope that some of you who are listening to this are, are paying attention to what's being said. This is really, really good, uh, I guess kind of like a blueprint to, to understand what it is that you're getting into. This space moves quickly. It's like, I call it dog years. I make a joke, you know, like a one year for a dog is like seven years for us. Right. And it's like, I feel like one day sometimes or one week in, in this space is like there, you can add a 10 X to that because so much happens in such a short amount of time. This is like, always waking up and I wake up in the morning, I get on my computer and my day's gone and I've done 10 hours of work, 12 hours of work. I feel like I pushed the fast forward button. And then here I am at the end of my day, getting ready to go for another four hours at night. But you said something that, that resonates with me. You, you are keeping yourself fluid and adaptable to what the space is giving you to work with. You have to be this way. If, if, if you're so set in stone on a certain thing, maybe it could work for you, but it's at some point may work against you. And if you're not willing to just be like, Hey, this is what I have to work with here. Let's adapt. Uh, let's, let's talk this over with the, with the top brass, but let's ask our community, what do they think? And at the end of the day, you know, you're opening the door because we all know as founders, we're, we're never going to make everybody happy. It is literally physically, numerically impossible to do that. 
And so if you steer away from that, trying to please everybody and say, hey, I've got a mission, I've got an idea, I've got goals ahead of me, but I also want to integrate my community because at the end of the day, they're the ones who support everything that I'm doing and be fluid and be liquid. That's amazing. And um, again, I hope people are taking notes because you know, we, we are in a special space at a special time and people talk about bear markets. You know, we went through something maybe four or six months ago. It was a really rough time. Things were down. People were coming out. They were minting projects, even good projects with, with I think, good ideas. Good founders were getting hammered. And, um, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we have this bull market. We pull out of it uh, and everyone starts pouring, you know, back into the CNFT space. I think a lot of other projects or other other platforms were starting to get their eyes on what we were doing and realizing that we are a legitimate space and we're actually here to contend for you know um, the, the fact that there's only so much you know I guess money you could say to go around within coming in and out whether it's a, a supply and demand and any investment that is the golden rule right but um, you know people are coming in and they're stepping up their quality as well and so your ability to adapt and continue on I think has allowed you to have multiple. Uh, I guess releases you can say because not everybody can do that sometimes you can oversaturate the market you can come in here and it sounds great on paper but then you get there and all of a sudden it's unsustainable because we maybe we haven't grown that much yet but uh you guys have managed to do that and i think that's a testament to, to how you run your project and, and the way you've done it and and being able to again be fluid but have that community have a voice in what you do and say and you know hats off to you bro because i know what it's like to be behind to be in that driver's seat it's not easy it's very demanding um, but the passion and I think the, the desire to, to create something special is what keeps us all going when we're here to do these kinds of things. Um, and so, you know, uh, hats off to you for that, bro. Uh, great, great job from, from me to you. Great job, man. Yeah, look, really appreciate those words, right? Because, you know, Zushan and I, we came from government. We had a secure income, um, but it just wasn't, you can say, rewarding, right? Mm -hmm. both, but both personally and I guess the work we were doing um, wasn't being noticed in terms of because it was such a big organization right um mm. and then we moved to the crypto space and i don't think i'd have it any different because it's it's been a journey it's been one hell of a ride but yeah. it, it's it's been so fun um and we're in a space where yes there's risk there's a, a big amount of risk but we're also mm. innovating um and we're innovating for the future and i just can't wait for the day where we have an opportunity to kind of share some form of let's say infrastructure or some value um that 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 is m most beneficial for the ecosystem because at the moment we're talking about you know our communities and serving our communities but we want to take it bigger right it's about okay, well, how, how do we serve the community um that's not just cardano but cross chain etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah I i'm excited for the the, the years to come uh, so am I. And that's why I'm here doing what I do full time. Uh, I, I love it. I gave up. I walked away from my job uh, a couple of years ago and a background in the restaurant business. So I went from being a total people person to uh, a guy on a computer. And uh, but then I, I, I recognized that even through this, there's there's a different way of establishing, you know, relationships with people, because I think relationships are the key to always being moving forward. And, and the collaborations that you can make and, and all these kinds of things within the space uh, are only going to be helping your project and further your project. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm just like you, man, I'm excited. I love that that crypto is pushing, you know, um, innovation in a financial way and, and NFTs are pushing all kinds of technology. And you, you hit something on the head there. You talked about you know, uh, giving back to the uh, space as a whole. And I feel like, and it's true, the, the healthier the space is within where you are operating, the better it is for everybody who's operating within that space. I believe that every one of us, whether it's myself as a YouTuber, influencer, educator, uh, project developer, someone like yourself, founders of these projects, we all have a little piece of that pie, that responsibility to build that and to protect that and to nurture that and to not just take from it, but to also give back to it. I've always seen you guys as a project uh, who has that kind of mindset. And, and I think that's why you've experienced so much of your success. Like I said, having that many collections and having it stay sustainable is absolutely like, that's no joke. That, that's, that's an achievement in my personal opinion. And it just shows that there's so much more to come. And, you know, there's a couple more things I would like to know a little bit more information about. If you could, you'd mentioned, um, I'd like to know more about the token as well, but you'd mentioned the, the clan wars. So how do these clan wars work? What, what is, when someone comes in, they want to know what is this clan war? How is that developed? And what's the platform with which you engage in that uh, aspect of your, your, your project here? Yeah, so the, the clan wars is a, a, a wider concept within the, the ecosystem. Um, 
you know, when we first started the project, we did a seasonal event where it was one hour a week. Um, all the clans got together. They were in their own separate chat chats. Mm -hmm. Um, and we did kind of like a, a dungeon dungeons and dragons style event where, you know, we gave all three of them different sets of text. They had different um, outcomes they had to vote on. We rolled a dice and then we kind of played the, the story through that way. Um, I think we did that for about eight weeks and the outcomes of those events actually went into the official comics, um, at, at the end of it. So that was one aspect of it. And, you know, it is really big on, on role playing. Um, okay. We looked at, you know, the burn storytelling event, which was the on-chain, I guess, clan wars, you can say, you know, which, which clan am, am I going to burn the most? Um, now we have the missions platform, you know, we're going to do uh, clan specific missions uh, that you have to send your NFTs on uh, for, you know, outcome. But then we also want to do battles in the future as well. Uh, and this is pro probably something that may, may come towards later the end of the year. Um, okay. Cause it's one of our, our ideas at the moment, right? It's like, okay, let's bring clan battles into the missions platform. So you can send um, different NFTs to battle other um, clans, right? But not just that, but other projects as well. So introducing other oh, projects oh, into oh, the, oh. the missions platform um, and, and going head to head that way, right? So it, which community is going to come out on top? Um, we don't know yet. So that's what we're going to do. We're, we're going to continue focusing this year on expanding missions and, you know, um, achievements, leaderboards, partnered projects, um, account level, all these different um, mechanics that come into the missions themselves. And of course the mission mechanics will, will change, right? So for people that don't, don't know, you send your NFTs on missions, there's four different outcomes, you know, good, very good. And then, you know, there's like very bad, right? Um, and we want to play around with that idea, right? Maybe, okay. maybe there's a, a, a mission where it's like a 50, 50% chance of a, a win or lose, right? Cause you're taking on okay. a boss. Right. Maybe there's a, a mission where you get double the reward, but there's 1% chance that you might lose your NFT. Um, mm. you know, for, for that deflation in your mechanic, maybe it's like you said, bad, you battle other partner projects and the, um, project that loses, I don't want to say lose all the NFTs, but they have to give out something right as, as a loss. So, um, that element is something that we want to really introduce. Of course, we have to understand you know, the, the whole regulations around gambling and, and uh, mm -hmm. lottery mm -hmm. and, and, and whatnot, but that's what is going to make us um, that project that people talk about. Um, and because it's going to be fun, I, right? Yeah, I to totally fun. agree. That's dude. That's, I think this space would eat that up. I, I've, I've heard of people having these kinds of things where you can battle in within your own project and whatever, like you said, there's so many regulations that have not come forth yet. And we're all just kind of holding our breath, waiting for, you know, uh, some of these things to, to clamp down so we can know what parameters we have to work with. In a lot of ways, it's still the wild, wild west out there. Uh, and we have a lot of room to work with, but someday those things may change. But like you said, you're fluid enough to be able to adapt to all these things. But that idea to me is awesome. And uh, I'm sure that there'd be plenty of partner projects signing up to be like, yeah, we want in on that. Because uh, if, if a community, like let's say they put it to a vote, uh, if it was my, if I was a member of a community, I would vote yes on that right away. I'd be like, yes, let's go play. I, of course, I'm a little bit of a degen, uh, you know, and so I, I don't mind taking those kinds of risks or whatever, but uh, there's different ways and different nuances. So that's almost just kind of like another idea that you guys have that could develop down the line that I think, you know, could be, like I said, people, there are people in the space who will be, you know, all about that kind of stuff. And uh, it's good to see that there's multiple directions something can go. When you create something, essentially, and you don't put a dome over it or a limit over it, you can do anything. Uh, if you have the technology to work within those limits, if you have the community backing you up and supporting you, if you if it's a well-funded project, you literally can build and do just about anything. Um, and I want to circle back as well, if you don't mind, uh, for, for people who don't know quite what, you know, gamified means, um, you mentioned that in the beginning of this this interview here, talking um, how there's a gamification aspect to your project. Can you talk a little bit about that so people understand that maybe it's not like you plug in a controller and you're playing a video game. What does gamification mean for, from Denketsu uh, to the public? Yeah, so, you know, you the way uh, we see it is that you have um, full, uh, let's say, blockchain games mm -hmm. where you have to log on with a a wallet or a user ID, you have to have NFT items. Um, you know, they're, they're all stored there. You can battle other players simultaneously, uh, in a sense, maybe it's a trading card game where all your cards are NFTs in a deck. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, there's, there's a, this closed ecosystem. And for us, 
we have we want to let it be an open ecosystem where you're actually gaming through different mediums um and they're all they're all interconnected in some way um so nft staking is a methodology or a technology that is present you know you send your nfts uh into a smart contract or you know you you stake them and then you earn rewards mm -hmm. back right that's passive staking right. but for us okay well maybe we can expand that to be more rpg based maybe it can be more a bit more fun right it's a bit more interactive right so then we, we introduce like a a story element to it um so you're instead of just staking you're actually going on missions um, and from mm -hmm. those missions, there's different outcomes and different rewards that come if you choose to interact with that, that platform. Um, we want to expand that to be, you know, a, a text based RPG, um, where your, your, your wallet that you connect, um, maybe you can level different NFTs, you can level the, the wallet character, um, and providing mm -hmm. that experience. It's not going to be a full, full scale game. And the, the way, uh, with this, the why, the why for that decision is that it allows us to provide value now. Um, you know, ah. for a full game, you have to spend you know, eight months, 12 months, whatever, however long it takes to and build all money. the, the mechanics, exactly. All the mechanics, yeah. everything that that's smooth. And then you, you start playing. Right? Whereas for us, it's like, okay, we have simple missions now. Uh, next week, we're going to release store items next week. There's different, uh, trait based buffs, et cetera, et cetera. It, the, the universe just expands in, in that way. Um, so that's, that's, that's why we think it's really fitting that, um, NFT projects introduce an interactive an interactive um manner on how to interact it with the ecosystem um and it's just a term that people have used at the moment gamified um mm -hmm. staking or gamified experiences um but maybe there might be a better term for it in, in the future well i think so but i th also think that that aspect of of you know um NFTs and projects and everything and integrating these things are going to, is going to evolve as well. Obviously, just like everything else is going to evolve. Uh, you know, the gamification can, can go on, on multiple levels, but a lot of people think they hear the word gamification or gamified or whatever. And they think, well, where am I plugging in my controller? You know what I mean? Especially some of the people in my age group, you know, I'm in my forties, man. So we're, we're Nintendo generation. We're like, what do you mean games? I can play games. And it's like, you know, uh, we're, we're pushing the limits of that technology. It's always being developed. And so I just want newer people to understand uh, what it is that these, some of these terms when they come in. Because I do also like to gear towards not just the people who know, you know, already what we're talking about here, but to facilitate a, a friendly environment for any new people who come here. Again, I'm always focused on growing the space and getting more people in here so that they can kind of take their circle of influence and influence their friends, their family, their coworkers, all of these things. And so the projects that are here that are building, that are working hard and developing something, those are people are going to be very successful, in my opinion, because really, again, you know, the sky is the limit. In fact, there, there isn't even a limit on, on what we're doing, what we're building here. Uh, and again, you seem to have a really good grasp on the overall picture of, of NFTs in general. Uh, this has been a very, very, very exciting interview. Uh, one more question I would have for you before I, I ask maybe if there's some things that we've forgotten or, or we could talk about before. I, I don't ever want to cut anything short because there's so much information on your project to give us. But talking about the token, right? So um, a couple of questions. When is the token uh, scheduled to be released? If, if you can talk about that. Um, I know that you've spoke a little bit about different ways to earn it. Um, I don't know if you can talk about what the limitations are that as far as you know, how many tokens are there, what kind of, uh, you don't have to get super deep into, you know, where the allocations or anything are going. But um, obviously, you know, tokens are a way to earn some, like you said, kind of like a passive income play. Um, we see a lot of tokens being developed in the space. Some of them have been successful. Most of them have not. Um, but when you have a system that's that brings value to the token, then we're actually talking about engaging people's um, incentivization to go and say, hey, what can I do to earn these tokens? And once I do, what can I do with them? And how does that benefit the user? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it's a, a very complex question. Um, I know, I'm sorry. Course, <laughs> I, I don't think, you know, we have the, the anyone has the answers to, um, you know, the success of a token and how we do, it portrays. Because when you really think about the way tokens are valued in a sense, it's not, yes, there's a layer of like intrinsic value mm -hmm. that comes through, but it's also a, a layer of um, speculation um, yes, because you're depending on, on the company to be successful in some way. But that success doesn't directly correlate to, I guess, the, the token value sometimes, right? Because we're- Correct. Most we're, times. Um, it's, it's the cycles that kind of provide that, that value or that, um, that demand. Um, and I think the perfect example is like, if you look at Tesla stock, stock or like Apple stock, um, their valuation in terms of, I guess, the stock 
is pretty much the entire crypto market in itself. Do you know what I mean? So mm. you're, you're, you're valuing right. one company's value against the whole entire crypto market, which is high risk, but high reward in terms of the technology that comes through. Right. So yes. that's just one thing that I wanted to say, but for us, it's about, okay, we've, we've had these N N NFT collections. Um, we have different experiences for them to, to be used in terms of, you know, voting, um, in, uh, staking, um, missions. And now it's about, okay, how do we, how do we provide another layer of, um, value or you change the flow of value within the ecosystem or outside the ecosystem. Right. Um, and that's, that's the, the token. You know, if, if we have, um, new products that come out, maybe you don't have to risk your NFT. Maybe you don't have to, um, mm. spend ADA or Fiat. You can just spend Ninja's token. Mm -hmm. Um, and that way we provide value to our existing holders, uh, in the sense that, okay, well, we've got to, going to give you an, an airdrop of all the tokens. It's up to you if you want to hold it, sell it, or, you know, um, use it to interact with the ecosystem. And then that way other players that come in, yes, maybe the, the token may drop. So they get the advantage in that sense of buying it when it's a bit cheaper or maybe it will go up. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they, ha they have to pay a bit more to participate. But that's how we provide that value and that ease of flow of, of value to, to everyone that's on board. Because we know the N NFTs are finite. Um, mm. You can't fractionalize it. You know, you can, but, you know, it's not uh, the, the common practice at the moment. Um, right. But then it's about, well, how do we provide that value again? So that's why we've done the, the token. Um, of course, there is the token coming out. Okay, so the, the question of when it's released, um, we have partnered with Genius X Launchpad to um do the token sale it's, it is a public sale um the first round is due to start on the 13th okay. um, of february and it will be only open to Danketsu nft holders um, and genius x ispo delegators for the first two weeks um and then it will be open up to the general public if there's any left after that so um it's all on our um white paper on our website also on the genius x launchpad website as well the right. details. Um, we've decided to go with G Genius X because we're part of their incubator accelerator. Uh, we joined with them in August last year. You know, like you said, you, I, I seem like I have a really strong strategic understanding of, you know, the space, but it, it's because of their help, right? They, they helped us with strategic uh, direction, uh, vision, uh, business planning, and of course the, the token launch as well. So long winded answer, but hopefully I, I answered it in, in some good fashion. Oh, no, that's perfect. And I, I love that because it actually goes back to what we were talking about a little bit earlier. Um, you know, that, that you said how much they helped you, you know, with that, that was formed with what a relationship you, you form these relationships with these people. And all of a sudden, before you know it, now you have all of these tools to use, uh, to, to further, uh, develop your project and your ideas and ultimately benefit the community and the holders. Cause we're all here to really make our projects beneficial for the people who are investing in, in the ideas that we have created and developed. And it's fantastic to me that there's so much technology behind this. And, um, you know, obviously not, not everyone can, can make a, a token, even uh, not so much successful on a monetary value, but wanting to use it and interact with it and, and having it be part of the ecosystem that is kind of like, you know, for, for long-term maintenance really, uh, which, which is amazing. So uh, one question I have thinking about that, cause I haven't looked at these metrics yet and um, all the links, by the way, everybody will be in the description box below for everything you'll need to know to find all the information that we've been talking about. And there's so much more to it as well. So if you want to check out and become a, a member of the community, check out the Twitter, uh, check out all these things, you know, the, the, the white papers, all that stuff, I will have all those links for you. Um, so with your tokens though, um, what can you tell me possibly what is the supply and or you, you talk about staking the tokens as well what how much of the percentage at least is set aside for staking and is there like a, a term limit or I almost feel like the way you mentioned it all the tokens were going to be delivered in an airdrop but that that's not true right that's not so if you look into the tokenomics of um, the ninjas token uh, it mm -hmm. is going to be on the project page for on genius X but it's also in a white paper um, mm -hmm. 55% of the actual t allocation is going to be for our game ecosystem. Um, so our gamified experiences through the, uh, NFC staking on missions, um, you know, all the other gamified experiences that we will introduce over the coming years. That's the allocation there. There is, I think a, um, eight or eight or 15% uh, for the team and founders in, in total. Um, uh, there's a 5% allocation to the airdrop for the four collections and um, other smaller ones as well. So 
Uh, we have a stake pool that we run. So it's a single operated stake pool. Um, and we're going to allocate some of those tokens to people who delegate to the stake pool as well. So um, it's, it's, it's more allocations. I think the staking um, platform itself is going to be ongoing for three years. So okay. if, let's say, for example, it's 5% that we allocate for staking. That's going to be spread over the five years, uh, the three years, sorry. Okay, excellent. Thank you. That's yeah, perfect. I love it. Um, I really only have one more question for you from from uh, being caught myself up to speed on everything that you guys are doing. And then um, we'll end up wrapping it up. I can't believe we've almost literally been talking for an hour now, but uh, it goes by pretty quickly. Um, you you guys have a launch pad, a launch pad, correct? Or some some form of a launch pad where you've actually helped other projects kind of kind of get where they need to go through the help and expertise that you provide. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, we, um, like you said, we are grateful that we have been considered uh, the OGs in this space. Um, and we want to make it. sure that we, we pay, uh, we pay back, right? We, we give it back to the community in some way, because there's, there's a lot of lessons learned um, that a lot of founders starting the space need to kind of understand. Um, yep. You know, even if you come in with the best of intentions, uh, the space just hits you, right? It's, it just goes bam, and you're like, okay, now what do I do, right? So we want to It'll humble you for everything yeah. that comes. That, that comes. Um, and so, yeah, we've partnered with a, a, a couple of projects today, you know, most notably Kabuki Tokyo. Um, they launched a, their project there, a Japanese-based project, Japanese team, anime-inspired. Um, so they've just launched. Um, we have another project, which is another Japanese-based project, uh, project called Hokusai Universe. Um, that's still, I guess, in the works, but if you go on to their Twitter, there's some sneak peeks there at the moment. Um, they're all going to be onboarding, I guess, a lot of uh, art inspired by, I guess, the life of Hokusai um, and that kind of art uh, style in that period. Um, we, we will continue to do so in various different forms. So we, it's not just about getting you from, you know, from start to launch, right? It's about, okay, where are you at in your, in your phase? What support do you need? And we'll provide that launchpad service on a case by case, um, service, right? Cause some people are great at art, but they just need that project management uh, guidance yeah. or some people are good at project managers, but they don't know the Cardano space, right? So it's yeah. about just traversing yeah. that space and providing that, that knowledge. So if anyone wants to reach out uh, to us as a, a launch pad, I guess, service, um, you know, we have weekly calls, uh, with you guys, we help you as much as we can with our own networks as well. Um, that, you know, I'm not saying like, we'll, we'll give you the alpha and we'll provide you alpha group. It's more about if you need a service, whether it's like a minting service or a website service, uh, we can provide that support as well. Um, and yeah, that's, that's something that's really exci exciting for us. We'll continue to do it, um, in, until the, the project doesn't exist anymore, pretty much. That's great. I mean, and what a what a great way to give back. Uh, I love I love your humility. I love the way you see the space and understand that. Um, uh, it's like the same term I've had is like if we can all give back. If we can if we can give back or at least attempt to give back, maybe even more than the space has given us. Imagine what we'll have in two, three years, five years down the road. Uh, and it, uh, another thing you said that I also resonates with me from my personal experience. Um, this pace can punch you in the mouth real quick. Uh, it'll humble you. You think you, you've, you've done so many things, you've learned something like that, and all of a sudden, boom, you're like, I did not see that coming. And, uh, you know, you learn so much from those mistakes. And if you can take some of the stuff that you've learned along the way, the bumps along the road, and help somebody else's journey out there, you never know who you're helping. You never know that that project could be the next blue chip. And, and it all kinds of comes back to, you know, your, your efforts in, in facilitating that. So, again, my hat's off to you in that regard. And, um, it, this has been a great interview. I, I honored to have you here. There's so much to know about your project. I would love to maybe have you on again sometime and uh, maybe some future coverage as well, deep diving the project, Mr. Ultimate Style, the way I do, and I love to do it. Um, is there anything that we forgot to talk about or anything that you would like to add to this conversation before we close this out and, and get this uploaded so people can start watching it? No, look, I think we've spoken a lot already. Um, that's, I, I guess, quite a bit for the, the people watching to digest already. Um, yeah. I'm happy to get on uh, again in, in the future, you know, when we have all these different, um, the products coming out, um, it, it's always good to kind of not just show face, but be able to, you know, communicate to everyone that, you know, we're still here, we're still building. Um, we still want you part of the community to have fun with us. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's what, that's why we're here, right? It's for the community, it's for the, the people watching. Um, and so, yeah, I've, it's been a really 
fun interview and um, yeah, I can't wait to do this again. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome, man. Well, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. And for everyone who's watching one more time, you made it to the end of this. You are my true supporters. I appreciate you guys real quickly. Give that thumbs up. You guys subscribe. If you have not done that yet, let's trigger those algorithms. We do these things because they're informational based. I want to educate you who are in the space, whether you're already here, whether there's new people in here, feel free to, to like and share all of this stuff with anyone you want that my product is your product. Let's help grow this space together, you know, with projects and founders like, uh, like Dan Ketsu and Tommy here. Look, we're in good hands, and uh, I just appreciate your time, my man. And, hey, Mr. Ultimate's got to go. We got to get this information up for everybody to watch it. Peace out, and God bless. Thanks, guys. Peace. <laughs>